in the overview video of my supercharged 92 GT, I, I mentioned that the car had previously made 765 rear wheel horsepower. I'll show a, a dyno graph for that and a, a video of it that was done in uh, May of 2023. And I'll show you this, this data log as well, which is the reason that I'm pretty confident that the car will make uh, 900 horsepower or or more at the tire this year with the changes I've made. Now, keeping in mind, uh, the big change I made was going from a Vortec TI supercharger, it was a V1 TI, to the, the YSI supercharger, uh, not the YSI-B with the, the billet impeller, just the standard YSI. <clears throat> so the, the, the biggest thing that I'm looking at to understand why I think I would make that much is actually fuel flow, how much fuel the engine is using. Uh, with the Holly, you're not actually reading how much air the engine is seeing, so you're, you're reading how much fuel the engine requires to maintain the air-fuel ratio that you're looking for, and that should give us an idea on, on how much horsepower it's actually making. If we, if we work out the numbers, um, it should be close. So let me, let me walk you through there, uh, get rid of my little screen box. What we have here is two different data logs, neither of them from the actual dyno pull. I have that, but it was done in fourth gear. I currently only have third gear pulls that um, can align pretty well. One was, was taken at the track about two weeks after I, I had dyno last year, and one was done on the street this year. You'll see some things that don't line up perfectly but the data should be close enough that we can we can see what's kind of going on um, so looking at this data just a quick understanding this green line is tps so i have the car floored here uh, the red line is rpm and you can see it climbing blue lines are our boost manifold pressure in kpa uh, white line here is fuel flow and you can see that the RPMs generally match fairly close at the top here, uh, but there's definitely more boost pressure and more fuel flow on the YSI, which is the solid lines. The solid lines are all the new YSI. The dotted lines are all the TI supercharger. If I, if I drop my cursor in here, and again, these don't line up exactly. They're a little different tire size, but they're, they're very close. Um, the TI actually peaked horsepower at around 6,000 RPM. So if I go to 6,000 RPM on this graph, you can you can look at the data log over here. It was about 820 pounds of fuel. Now if you multiply that out, understanding that you made 765 horsepower and you used 821 pounds of fuel to do that, you should come up with about 0.93 as a, as a multiplier there to get from pounds per hour to horsepower. Now if I take that 993 number from the YSI blower and I multiply it by the same 0.93, I come up with 923 horsepower. So it should be should be easily making that 900 horsepower range. I actually believe that we might see much more than that and, and the reason for that is with the TI, I was spinning that blower a few thousand RPMs over its maximum. The YSI, you have to spin that blower faster. You have to spin it harder. And I was spinning that just about to the peak RPM of the blower. You can actually see towards the end of the run here, the YSI really starts to pick up on fuel flow and really starts to pick up on boost here. You can see that fuel flow and, and boost take a, a little noticeable step up right here near the end. You can also see that at 6,000 RPM, where this, this engine peaked last year, I've got almost 19 pounds of boost. Uh, it peaked at 20 and a half, I think, um, on the dyno graph. And with the YSI, I've got 22 and a half pounds there. So I've got, you know, significantly more boosted at that point. And it actually peaks at around 25 and a half pounds of boost on this run. And I didn't run the YSI out nearly as far. If I look here, I, I lifted it uh, just a little under 6,400 RPM with the YSI, where I was seeing 25 and a half pounds of boost. Uh, where with the TI, I only saw 20 pounds of boost there. And you can see the fuel flow 
really keeps going up on the on the TI. It's significantly higher than the YSI. Now you will notice my fuel pressure was dropping off with the YSI. I had to make a, a fuel pump change when I um, did this data log, so I've, I've corrected that, but in this one the, the fuel pressure was definitely dropping. If I go back over to the, well, right here it's about 6100, 6200 RPM, you can actually see that I'm using significantly more injector there as well. So I think what's happening is um, I'm, I'm not only just making more power at 6,000 RPM where where it made it before, but that's where it would it, it peaked there and it was kind of falling off on power. I'm hopeful based on the increase in boost there and the way this thing revs out now that I'm actually gaining power over 6,000 RPM that I've got a shot at making, again, over 900 horsepower. So that's my justification. That's why I think we'll see it. Now I will note, um, we see a lot of people say that YSI is lazy compared to like a TI or an SI. I, I think I think that's subjective to what you're, how you're using it and how hard you're spinning it. Remember, you have to spin the, the YSI about 11 or 12,000 RPMs higher just to get into the usable range of the YSI. A lot of people, all the racers out there are saying you really have to overspin the YSI to make the most out of it, uh, which I'm not really quite doing. But they'll say it's lazy down low and what you're seeing on my graph it kind of shows that but it's don't don't believe it this is this is false and the reason i say that is if i go to this next screen here uh, i actually use the blow off valve on this car to control boost much like you would with a wastegate on a turbo car i i force the blow off valve open so i can dump boost and you can see that's this purple line right here and it's as it's falling, it's it's closing the blow off valve, allowing more boost. So, the the YSI is actually making more boost than a TI everywhere. Um, we just need this blow off valve to close so that I can get the boost. You know, it's not an exact science doing it this way because a, a blow off valve can only flow so much air, and it's not really designed to be used the way I am. But doing that. I can dump roughly 10 pounds of boost. So if I'm seeing 20 pounds of boost uh, with whatever pulleys I have, when I open the blow-off valve, I see about 10 pounds of boost. So dumping that valve is actually what I do to try to manage traction on the street. That was that was one of the, the comments in the other video as well, was you know leaving the 15-inch the tires and slicks on there rather than the 18-inch tires. But... The 18-inch tires, keep in mind, they're on a they're on an arc compound tire. It's a Nitto NT01. It's a 100 treadwear compound tire. Anyway, um, dumping the, that boost out, and I also can pull some timing out. In fact, I think I, I do pull some timing out. Uh, it really reduces horsepower, and I do it by controlling basically boost by speed. This is the dyno, uh, the dyno sheet. Uh, along with just after this you'll see the dyno run of the um, 765 rear wheel horsepower pull that I made last year. This is done at uh, Mike Post shop. I will likely call Mike and go back just to verify you know everything I'm talking about here trying to make 900 horsepower. <laughs> This is a Maker's Garage spoiler. Um, they make this in, in two variations, the plastic one, which is what I have, and a carbon fiber one. Um, to be fair, I wasn't 100% sure what I wanted, um, if I'd love it on the car, which it turns out I really love it on the car. Um, so I got the less expensive composite plastic one, but the thing is fantastic. I, I absolutely wouldn't have a car without it. 
Um, you can see some of the bugs and stuff on the car. I've been driving it the last few days and we're in the Midwest here. We got uh, cicadas this year. You can see um, they're just uh, kind of everywhere. That one must have got up in there the other day. Um, so Maker's Garage, uh, spoiler. Um, yeah, bare brakes, 17 by 17. I, man, I'm really messing this video up. 18 by eight inch front wheels, 18 by nine and a half in the rear. The last set that I showed were 15 by 10 bead locks. So this is the 15 inch rear bead lock wheel compared to the 18 inch um, rear Bogart wheels.